Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, I know it's been uh, quite a long time since I've uh, made a video, um, but that was uh, due to my uh, study. Uh, I just started a new internship and uh, I just finished a project that was uh, quite big. So I really didn't have time to do anything for YouTube, which is a shame. But now I'm back uh, with a quite spectacular video, if you may call. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to, um, well, is it modding? Yeah, it's, it's modding your Xbox, the original Xbox, to use a, um, another DVD drive. So as you might know, uh, this DVD drive is broken, or well, the, the laser is broken. And it won't play anything, because uh, I rotated the pot all the way. And the description said, do not do that. And what did I do? I rotated it all the way. So, it's not working. Uh, and in order to do this, you need to have a couple of things. Now, one obviously is the original Xbox, and the uh, other things are four 1K resistors. Now, the uh, the guide I will be uh, posting in the description down below says uh, that surface mount resistors are preferred. Um, but if you uh, take caution while soldering them, uh, I don't think it shouldn't be a problem because uh, we're going to hot glue them in place. This is my wrong knife. We're just going to hot glue the resistors in place so they won't uh, flap around. Because that's what we uh, don't want to happen. Now let me open the package I've got in store for you. Because if you think twice, you know that one thing is missing. And what is that, you will ask? Well, that is a DVD drive. So, for this mod, um, you'll need to have an LG DVD drive. Uh, a very specific LG DVD drive, namely the LG GDR 8163B. Uh, it's an IDE drive, and then we come to the uh, third, or is it fourth? To the fourth item uh, we are going to need, and that is a computer running Windows with an IDE connection because we need to flash new firmware onto the disk drive um, and we need a computer for that so that's the first step you uh, want to do because if it uh, doesn't work yeah there's no point at continuing so let me um, connect this to the computer and so on and so forth and I'll see you back in a minute so before we insert the drive into the computer, uh, make sure to put the, the slave selection plug on the middle one, since the right one is the slave, and the middle one is the CSM, and I think that's the uh, master. So install it into uh, a computer, make sure to put it on the uh, primary channel, IDE channel 0. So uh, basically remove everything and put it on the topmost uh, connector. So, so open Rufus, Rufus uh, select your USB thumbstick, click download, free DOS, uh, use MBR BIOS now. Uh, check solution for all BIOSes and Rufus MBR thing for the name of free DOS. Doesn't really matter, but just looks okay. Alright, and then click start. Click OK. Everything will be deleted from your USB. 
so please keep that in mind and wait for it to format oh it's going to not do quick format let's just cancel that uh, quick format everything's still right yeah start okay make sure to check quick format otherwise it will take ages there you go creating file systems done. Now copy this onto your FreeDOS drive. Nice and easy. So boot your PC and go into the boot menu. Like that. Uh, go to the hard disk. Press enter to boot. And there again, and type flash dot bat. Oh, there you go. So it's uh, writing the firmware. Please reboot and go to your boot devices, and we should have a. There you go. So, I think we're all set now. So, shut your PC down and take out the drive, and we continue from that. So, after you've uh, installed the firmware, I think it's a, a good time to open the Xbox in order to get the old drive out and to get the connectors out that might be in there that we need so take I take out the usual screws now know that I'm connected to an anti-static uh, wrist uh, band this, that's just because I'm wearing wooden socks uh, and yeah uh, it's not really necessary but since uh, oh yeah, don't forget to take out your DVD uh, dongle thing it's just for extra safety the wrist wrap or wrist band not sure how you want to call it and the Final screw hidden underneath the silver sticker. There you go. Nice. So put that aside. And remove the IDE connector, remove the jumper, and we should be able to remove the disk. Uh, there are a couple of uh, screws we need to undo first. They're all Torx, so... Okay. Put them aside. But they're magnetic, and that's really useful. Make sure to not break the plastic tray. Uh, 
Oh, you can just pull it out. So, pull it out. Here's the disc. The disc drive. The original one. Now, put this aside. And we'll deal with this one later. Now, that there. Once more, there is a um, connector going to the motherboard. Unplug it, because we uh, we need this. Grab your um, new retrofit uh, drive. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. And take it apart, basically. Just open the four screws because we need to uh, uh, hardware mod the drive as well. We need to uh, connect some of the, the wires from the, the little jumper uh, to uh, the pads inside the drive. So First, need to remove the main cover. Yeah, I think that's uh, the best place to start. Remove the front plastic bezel. That's held in by clips. So I managed to uh, open the drive, but. I need to correct the, the opening and closing mechanism. First remove this front panel thingy, which is something that you pull upwards or push upwards, hopefully without breaking something, and then you can remove the front panel. Alright, so I managed to get it to work. So once you take out the, the disc thing, you need to uh, grab the schematics or the PDF that I am going to post down below in the description. I uh, suggest you already prepare your soldering iron. So let's just do that right now. Let it heat up. Okay. So 
So we do need to remove this PCB. I suggest you already prepare yourself on how to do it. We need a total of 12 wires. So that's quite a lot. Let's put on the lights. So 12 wires. Uh, I used basically are going to use basically the same kind of wires. Okay. Now I can focus. So there are a couple of uh, points we need um, to solder to, but I firstly recommend stripping the uh, wires and actually pre-soldering the wires so that you can solder them quite easily later on because you basically need to rewire that whole 12 pin connector that was connected to the original drive because there are um, a few wires needed for controlling the, the device right here there's a connector it says CN301 and right next to it there is a thing here a solder pad called SW minus now that is the ground for the VRCD and in order to connect the, to connect it uh, you need to place a SMD resistor uh, in series with the wire loop out of the resistor leg and add some extra solder to it and solder the resistor in place like that now remember that the boards are going to be lying flat like this and that there shouldn't be any moving parts right here because this is the, the drive mechanism and you need to do a mod wire going from the other side of this resistor to a soldering pad that's called VRDC and it's located right here so but before we do that I recommend that you place a little bit of hot glue on top of the resistor so wrap the resistor around the wire and solder it in place To ensure a good connection, shove a heatsink over the wire and the, oh, it's out of frame. Over the wire and the solder joint. Uh, it will fit. And heat it up. Like that. And your glue gun should be ready. So place a little bit of hot glue over the solder joint. Just enough to keep the wire in place. 
and we need to connect it to VRDC. So and strip the wire free thin this little wire and grab a tweezer and connect it to this pad VPRC I'm going to do this sideways grab your wire and connect it to this pad okay so that's the first one and for this one we need a total of five uh, cables so if we've got yeah there you go we've got something laying around with five cables i suggest you use that that one now there is a hole right here separate the fifth wire and route them through this hole. This makes it easier later on to uh, connect uh, the wires to the uh, connector that the uh, that connects to the motherboard of the um, Xbox. So now you've got four wires over here, four and a, a single wire over here. What you need to do is you need to connect these four wires to these four pads um, and as with every other wire please remember the order of the wires the four wires go with the flow of the wires and solder them one by one to these four points so that they flow a little bit nicer That's one. Okay, so wires should be connected. Got the ends. Nice, so they're soldered, finally. Now there is a soldering pad over here and that's this one it's called eject and another wire needs to be soldered to the eject soldering pad and as you might be able to guess that's for the eject mechanism so all of that onto there try to get the wires nice and organized might need to rotate them and we've got the power wires successfully installed for our xbox like this so that are those five wires and now we do need to flip the pcb the first one is the tray out and that's this one then we need tray in that is this one yeah and then we need the ready and that is 
this one. Put some solar on the and solder them onto the PCB. Make sure to not damage the laser ribbon cable and now grab your hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue over it to secure it to the PCB uh, all three need uh, resistors so before we rip off the solder pad and that's not what we want so again a little bit of hot glue to secure the resistor now the third one that's the ready pin and that is this one to keep it in place and wait for it to dry now we need to connect those wires those three wires to another three wires over here I'm going to use rather long wires and I will fit a heat shrink over the resistor as well Like so. And then we shrink them. So, I think that that was it for the mod wires. Now, of course, we do need to prepare the other end of this cable. Okay. Let me stick this down. So it won't move that much. 
cool. And as well, glue this one down too. Okay, right, now uh, we need that connector that we used, uh, we pulled from the Xbox. We need to uh, make a cut at this side of the connector. So this is the bigger connector that, that goes into the Xbox. And we need to cut the small connector side. Now I recommend that you don't cut all of them in one go, but that you follow the, uh, the steps the wire meanings and do them one by one or actually a pair by a pair with the two pins facing up so like this for you these outer two these two are the ground wires so those two now you can cut them and strip them i'm going to just twist them together to create a single Pair, single wire of the pair, and don't forget to add a heat shrink. So are we going for black on this one? Since black's for ground, of course. And we now need to solder it to a ground wire, and that's one of those four. The inner two are the ground wires and since this one is our 12 volt wires these should be the rest of the wires and this should be the eject button so let's verify if that's correct this is the eject button this is 12 volt ground and 5 volt I uh, know that there is another ground wire in the connector I will only use one of the ground wires since we need another wire another ground wire uh, for one of the other pins. And I won't uh, put the heat shrink over it yet because if I made a mistake things can't be corrected anymore. So now wrap your connector again again with the two things pointing uh, upwards and then this wire this hole is the 12 volts so cut that one and there is another 12 volt that we also need to connect and that is the red wire so that's this one this one in the corner so cut that one as well and again strip them pair them put the heat shrink over it now I'll use a red heat shrink for the 12 volts and a yellow heat shrink for the 5 so shove the thing over it a nice meal So, pardon me, I had a quick uh, lunch break, it was really nice, really nice, mozzarella with the pesto, a few tomatoes, and I think I see a better bread. So again, connector, the connection 6 and connection 2 form the 12 volt pair. And the 12 volts located at the outside of the PCB. So that's the uh, red coated wire. So we need to solder those two together. Right outside of your view. Like that. Again, don't put the heat shrink over it. Uh, so, grab the connector. Things pointing upwards. 
Nou, de wire beneath die 12 volt layer. Wire number 8. That is the 5 volt wire. Uh, so, cut that one. And there is another 5 volt wire beneath the other 12 volt wire. And that's wire number 12. So, right in the corner. Remove the isolation. And wrap them together. We'll create a single 5 volt wire pair. Add some solder. And the innermost wire of the four, this one, that's the 5 volt. And since the, in the middle uh, two wires are ground, and this wire is the eject, this should be the 5 volt. But before we do that, let's add, add a uh, yellow heat shrink over it. Straighten out the wire a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look that good, but it's it's a connection. Uh, it's a connection. So we've got five wires left. So I grab the connector two things facing upwards and then the third pin at the top row this one that's the tray out pin now this is going to get a little bit tricky because for that we need to flip the PCB so tray out and that's the that's the wire with the black heat shrink. Try out. Am I correct? Yeah, I'm correct. That goes to the right side, as you can see right here. That is this wire. So these two we need to connect, the outer wire and the wire that's loose. So prepare the wire, place a, um, well, I'm going to do a blue, but you, you know it's just a color, heat shrink over it. Grab your outside wire. and connect them oh, that's a really nice uh, solder joint actually okay so that is the tray out now at the bottom of the tray out there's data uh, below the tray out and it's not listed, so we just go on uh, to the right of the tray out, and that's the fourth pin. So, one, two, three, four. That's this one, and maybe you can expect it, but it's tray in. So, cut it and strip the wire isolation. Also, a semi decent on the joint. Okay, and to the right of the. Oh, no, we first need to do the one below. So that's the fourth from the left at the bottom. 
So one, two, three, four. It's the one below the tray in. Uh, so not the data, the tray in. So that should be it. Yeah, it's this one. That is the CD ready pin. Remove the isolation, pretend, you know, all the usual things you should do with the wire before soldering. I already pretend it. Add a blue heat shrink. And now there's only one signal wire left of the three wires, and that is the data ready. Is that correct? That is correct, or the CD ready. Well, there's only one signal wire left, and that's the eject. Uh, but so. Well, this is to get a little bit trickier add some solder to my soldering tip oh come on There you go. So the last one of the underside of the PCB. So we can flip it. And right now there are uh, two um, open connections for the things we didn't solder yet, which is fine. So grab the connector and right now we need to solder the last ground and connect it to the other middle pin of the wires that um, started at the top of the PCB. I didn't pre-solder it yet. Pre So that should be this one. Right there. So there's one wire left to do. Actually, there's two wires left on the connector, but one wire left. That's the fifth wire from the left on the bottom, and that's the eject signal. So cut it and finally solder it to the last remaining wire coming out of the CD player. Like that. So everything is soldered. Now that's uh, all connected up. Now it's time to install it, but there's one issue, of course. We've got lots of wires coming out of the 
device with nowhere to go. So we need to cut away some plastic in order to uh, let the wires escape around here. like that so now if we put the PCB back on there I think we should be able to route the wires for the created hole and fit the PCB, like that. Oh, that's uh, nice. Cool. So yeah, at this stage, I actually do suggest only putting the heat shrinks over the connections not actually heat shrinking it yet power it on Now the main question is voila guys, we've got a working, not working, I think it's working, CD drive. So, now that we know that it's working, we're going to put the heat shrink over the connectors and shrink them all down after you've heat shrunken everything down you need to get the Xbox back on your desk and you need to um, remove this plastic thing that holds everything in place because we need to uh, modify it so that our new DVD drive will fit. So, this is going to be a bit tricky, uh, but we won't need this thing anymore. And we want to remove it, and actually we want to remove it completely. Till it's flush with this part of the plastic. And maybe it's best to use a saw. But I do have an another trick that I 
think will also work. Cutting the plastic away with a very hot spatula. So, heat my heat gun to 480 degrees. And warm the thing up. Don't expect there to be uh, uh, one cut and then you're done. There will be a few. So take your time. Move gently. Wipe off the plastic that uh, sticks on the spatula end. There you go, now it's removed, that's a little bit better than cutting, and I think it's uh, rust prover as well, so we're not done, but we are with this thing, we now need to remove this screwing post, because we don't need it. This is done. Now the final part. We need to remove our these two screwing holes. Now the next step involves cutting um, something of the side of the uh, disc tray, now properly ejected this time. So um, you need to cut off from this, this part, here, yeah. this. Uh, cut it one by one millimeters. Uh, so if the first one doesn't fit, then make another cut. And it's important to only cut the, the front piece. Uh, yeah, so uh, be a little bit careful when you remove the Xbox thing from your original drive and make sure that it doesn't break like has happened with mine. So now it's time to uh, cover the drive pack up. For use and the Xbox. Tom ta dum tum 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 tum. This should go this way. Make sure that all the wires don't actually touch the case that's the thing to check so screw everything back together nice uh, yeah do it for the, the, the 12 volt no 
for the five fault. I think the grounds that uh, the device is grounded, so I think if we do this, yeah, no shorts. Yes, get your Xbox. Get this thing and make sure to uh, route the power cable through here. First, the power cable goes inside there. Make sure that this settles down. Try this. I've inserted two uh, or one M3 screw in here and one in there. And I'm actually going to try to not break it and break this one. Check if that works. To clamp it between the plastic. Like this. So an M3 screw in there, it, uh, it makes your uh, disk drive uh, stay in place inside the Xbox. Little uh, tip trick. So since that's done, now it's time to connect the power and control plug. That's in. Now there's one thing to do. And that is to connect the IDE cable. Put it like this. Make sure to align everything right this time. I think it closed. Which is wonderful. Since now we can put the screws back in. And play a DVD since I don't have any original Xbox games. I was just thinking about all the wires going through, and I hope I don't rip them apart. By screwing the screws in. Now this one won't fit because the DVD drive is in its way. So that means that we have successfully installed our modded DVD drive. Let's hook it back up to the television one more time. To check if it's able to play a DVD. So let's uh, set up the time. Just go for for the, the zero time. We need to be hey, hey, play back it and move this to continue. Yeah, let's just power off the device.
Oh, this is steak. Ooh. Ooh. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that the DVD player is working. There you go. This is really nice. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you find this video interesting. If you do, please uh, uh, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Uh, if you find this guide interesting, please share it with all your friends uh, on the Fora and uh, everybody else that you think uh, has a broken Xbox or a broken Xbox DVD player. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.